Have you ever looked at a globe or a map and wondered what those crisscrossing lines really mean? The ones that form a kind of invisible net wrapping around the Earth. Those lines are called longitudes and latitudes, and they're not just random decorations. They are the foundation of how we locate anything on our planet. From guiding ships in the middle of the ocean to helping your smartphone pinpoint your exact location, longitude and latitude form the backbone of global navigation and mapping. But what exactly are they? Why do we need two sets of lines and how were they even measured long before GPS existed? Let's take a journey around the world, quite literally, to find out. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with latitude. Imagine slicing the Earth horizontally into thin layers from top to bottom. Each of these slices represents a line of latitude. Latitudes run parallel to the equator. That's why they're often called parallels. The equator itself is the starting point, marked as zero degrees latitude. As you move north or south from the equator, the latitude increases until you reach the poles. The North Pole at 90 degrees north and the South Pole at 90 degrees south. These lines tell us how far north or south a location is from the equator. Latitude lines are measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. One degree of latitude is roughly equal to 111 kilometers or about 69 miles which means if you travel one degree north, you've moved about 111 kilometers closer to the North Pole. This consistent spacing is what makes latitude so useful for navigation and climate understanding. Areas near the equator tend to be warmer because the sun's rays hit them more directly, while areas closer to the poles receive sunlight at a slant, making them much colder. That's why we often hear about tropical, temperate, and polar zones. They're defined largely by latitude. Now let's talk about longitude. If latitude lines wrap the Earth horizontally, longitude lines stretch vertically from the North Pole to the South Pole, like the segments of an orange. These are called meridians. Unlike latitude lines, which are parallel to one another, all longitudes converge at the poles. There are 360 degrees of longitude in total, 180 degrees east of a starting line and 180 degrees west of it. But where exactly does that starting line or prime meridian begin? By international agreement, the prime meridian runs through Greenwich, England, and is marked as zero degrees longitude. Every other longitude line is measured in degrees east or west of this point. For example, Manila in the Philippines is around 121 degrees east, while New York City is about 74 degrees west. The choice of Greenwich wasn't because of any special natural feature, but rather a historical decision made in 1884 when countries agreed on a single reference line for navigation and timekeeping. That's why we also have the term Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT. It's the time standard based on the prime meridian. When you combine latitude and longitude, you can pinpoint any location on Earth with incredible precision. Latitude tells you how far north or south you are, while longitude tells you how far east or west. Together, they form a unique coordinate pair, like a global address. For example, the coordinates 40.7128 degrees north, 74.0060 degrees west point directly to New York City, or 51.5074 degrees north, 0.1278 degrees west lands you in London. This coordinate system is what your GPS uses every time you open a map app on your phone or get directions to a new place. But here's the fascinating part. 
This system was developed long before satellites and digital maps. Ancient navigators used the stars and the sun to measure latitude. By observing the height of the North Star above the horizon, sailors could estimate how far north they were. Longitude, however, was much trickier. For centuries, determining it accurately at sea was nearly impossible because it required precise timekeeping. That problem wasn't solved until the 18th century, when a self-taught clockmaker named John Harrison invented a highly accurate sea clock, the marine chronometer, allowing sailors to finally calculate longitude based on time differences between their location and Greenwich. You can think of longitudes and latitudes as forming a massive imaginary grid that wraps around the Earth. This grid divides the globe into smaller, measurable sections, making it easier to chart maps, navigate routes, and study global patterns. Meteorologists use latitude and longitude to track weather systems. Pilots use them to plot flight paths. Scientists rely on them to monitor earthquakes or study climate zones. Even internet and phone systems rely indirectly on these coordinates for location-based services. There's also an interesting connection to time zones. Since the Earth is divided into 360 degrees of longitude, and it rotates once every 24 hours, each hour corresponds to about 15 degrees of longitude. That's why when you travel east or west, your clock changes by one hour for every 15 degrees you move. The concept of longitude is directly tied to how we measure time globally, a reminder that geography and timekeeping are closely linked. So the next time you open Google Maps or glance at a globe, remember, those crisscrossing lines are not just for decoration, they represent centuries of exploration, mathematics, and human ingenuity. Latitudes and longitudes are our way of bringing order to a round, spinning planet, helping us locate, travel, and connect with one another. Whether you're a sailor navigating the open sea, a pilot charting a flight, or just someone checking in at your favorite cafe, these invisible lines quietly guide every move we make across the Earth. That's what longitudes and latitudes really are, the coordinates of civilization itself. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.